Hi everyone, my name is Suma and I'm here with Christina Olson. She's a spiritual healer and spiritual teacher. Uh, she had a spontaneous awakening in the beginning of 2011 um, and she's going to talk with us about Kundalini experience. Hi Christina. Hi, Hi Suma. Can you give us a little bit of your background and how you uh, how the Kundalini experience opened up for you? Well, um, when it happened, I was meditating. I was following this guided meditation on YouTube, and it just... Do you want me to explain a little bit how my awakening was? Sure. Yeah? yeah. Um, so I was meditating just to feel better. Um, I have been going through a really rough time in my life at the time, and I found that meditation was make me feel better. So I wasn't looking for a spiritual awakening. I was just doing it to daily feel better because um, I found it was really helping me. And now this is in beginning of 2011. So uh, I don't remember it as freshly as once I did. So um, I was meditating, and it was a chakra clearing meditation. And I have a video uh, on YouTube about it, and it's the listed the video because a lot of people ask which one it was, but I really don't think it matters. It's like once you're ready, you're ready. Um, I was meditating, and I started seeing this little light, and I heard, like, do you want to know? And I'm very curious, so I was like, yes. And... God, you know, honestly, I don't really um, remember it as much anymore. But um, um, I remember what happened afterwards. But um, it just started opening up light. It just started pouring in light. And light started coming in, like, from the front here. And then it started, felt like my whole skull was, like, opening up. And then there was just, like, this waterfall of light. Um, and I had this realization that I'm an eternal being, that I'll never die, and that everything is love. Um, those were, like, the, the, the core and I was in this state of deep bliss, and I was so alive, and I was just pure energy. And while I was in this state, I don't remember anything around it, but I was sort of looking down at my body, and I was sort of feeling myself in this state. And I couldn't feel myself breathing, I couldn't feel my heart, and I was sort of looking for it kind of curiously wondering where it was or if I could feel it or anything, but I was just feeling like energy and I was just feeling this deep, deep bliss. Uh, and then I came out of it and everything changed. After that, I could just feel this energy radiating out of my being. It's like I could go into a room and I could change the whole frequency. It's just like I could go in and it was just, I remember I could just change all the energy in the room, <laughs> like instantly. And I realized that I could feel people's energy, which was very overwhelming in the beginning. Um, and I was married at the time, so I could, he, he was kind of like my um, test, <laughs> test person. Uh, feeling the chakras, I could feel them spinning, and I learned later you should never try to change the spinning uh, <laughs> or do anything like that. And like, it's like a new. I came out of it completely transformed, but it was like I had a lot of skills that I had no idea what to do with, and this guidance from within that was very, very loud um, that I hadn't experienced before, and this energy that was just constant. Yeah. Was it like a watershed moment for you or was the change after that awakening, was it a gradual change or, or did it change like drastically overnight? Both, both. I mean, drastically, I was completely like reality as I knew it changed completely from then on. Um, I've had going from not knowing, um, I mean, my family is atheist. Um, and, 
stuck with not having a religion or not talking about God and then realize I'm an eternal being and everything is love and God is love. Uh, and that there is just like this pure energy that we're a part of. But then after that, I got obsessed with knowing more and understanding more of this energy and understanding about chakras. And I was reading books and not all the books were explaining it like I was experiencing it. And then even more questions started coming in because a lot of the chakra books were talking about how you know, ancient books and talking about how the other people doing it. And I was like, this doesn't make any sense. Um, this is not how I'm feeling it. And so it was gradual. And I think still it's gradual. It's this, like this, this immense need to know more and understand more and feeling like I don't really, maybe never will understand everything. Um, yeah, and what, if that makes sense. It does make sense. Was this experience, was it visual for you or was it um, more just an energy sensation? Energy sensation. Well, I mean, everything was white, as I remember. It was just pure white. Um, but I think that I experienced it sensationals, yeah. It was more a sentient feeling. It just like engulfed in light and then just this feeling of being in pure bliss, in pure love. And, and I mean, it, there's no words to describe it, but yeah. So there wasn't like moving objects or everything. It was just, you know, light, <laughs> white. <laughs> and what's the difference between Kundalini awakening and spiritual awakening? Um... I think both of them really are very subjective. I think you can have many spiritual awakenings. Um, I mean, it's very personal. What someone says they have a spiritual awakening can be uh, anything, right? And from realizing that you are a spirit or maybe even starting to question uh, what's the meaning of life and um, what's God and all those kind of things. Um, Kundalini awakening for me personally I realized after the awakening that I've been experiencing this energy my whole life and that even when I was a kid, I used to hang on to things uh, and the energy would rise in my spine. And it felt really good and I used to just do it because it felt good. Um, and so for me, the definition, because for me personally, now there's so much information out there about this energy. I had no idea that my energy was activated within me because it's what I've always experienced um, and what I've always felt. And I've had these spiritual, um, mystical experiences my whole life, but I never really thought there was anything special about it because it's it's um, it was just always there. I've had very lucid dreams as a kid and I always, I could wake out of the dreams and, and it was like the walls were moving and, and, um, you know, I kind of, I think I've always been used to reality not being maybe as solid. <laughs> solid? Yeah. So it wasn't maybe asking so many questions about that. And so for me personally, it awakened for me, a Kundalini awakening is when you're awake and you know that that this energy is the divine within you that's awakening. And, and after this awakening, called self-realization, is that I know I'm eternal. I know everyone's eternal. I know this all is God. There's like there's no questions about it, and you, no one needs to believe me. But for me, that's there's nothing that I need to ask about that. I have a lot of questions about other things, but I know we are eternal. So for me, that was the awakening. Like, I know this energy. I know this is like my pure self and everything else is transition, transition, transition. <laughs> like it's, it's, it's changing. It's like a part of the illusion, something we can experience. Like this personality experiencing myself as Christina and then losing that, which to part of the process is like this continuous transformation. I can 
that's scary. So there's the um, experiencing this deep trust in the divine, and then going like, oh, 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 wait, 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 this is really like, I don't know if I can go there. Like, I'm really comfortable in my body right now. <laughs> I'm okay with being just Christina, or like, you know, being in the body. I don't know what's beyond. So there can be fears like that. Um, but I still know I'm eternal. And how does the energy, how does it decide when to wake up um, in a person? When you're ready. Um, it knows you better than you know yourself. It knows, it knows it. I think you have to, as because we have free will, we have to agree. And so, like I said in the beginning, I was feeling this light starting to trickle in and I heard, do you want to know more? And I said, yes. If I would have said no, I don't think it would have happened. Uh, and do you think this awakening happens uh, on a diff at a different intensity for different people? Like maybe some people have partial awakening. Yeah, totally. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it's um, Gopi Krishna, which is a well-known uh, person that written a lot. He well written a couple of books anyway. Um, I believe he was meditating a lot on his crown when he had his awakening. So he was very intensely focusing on the higher chakras. And I believe he had excruciatingly painful experience because his nadis was not cleared enough. Um, and I've heard a lot of people having, and I've worked with a lot of people that are having imbalances in their systems. So maybe lucky, I don't know, but I've been, I think, blessed in my awakening how smoothly it's been. Um, yeah. As you mentioned, nadis, uh, some people may not know what nadis are. Uh, okay, right. So nadis are the, the, like the whole energy system are like little channels and there are three main ones that goes in the spine. And we have many, 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 many energy channels throughout our whole being, so not just in the spine. Um, and the, the shishumna is the main one and then you have the nadis and they go like, like a snake kind of feeling and actually when when um, you can often see kundalini depicted as a snake and after the the awakening 2011 uh i remember going to the kitchen like after it settled and i was like whoa what was that you know and i could feel in my spine this kind of woo, 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 down my spine I was like <laughs> um and I never felt that before um, uh, or after, right? Like that, that, that's um, kind of slittering feeling. Yeah. In some depictions, I've seen that um, the right channel and the left channel, they are kind of straight. Um, oh, right. I, I, uh, yeah. And in some, I've seen that it's spiral. Um, it's, it's a bit, right. <laughs> it's a yeah, bit confusing. Uh, yeah, like now when I work with the energy and I work with other people, I don't feel this. Like I just, you know, like I, I just, the energy just running freely in all directions, kind of like that. There's just no um, structures. So it's not like you're going to channel and follow it like that. And I haven't, yeah. Uh, and when it's moving up um, and it's, it seems like it's working to each knot. Um, what is it exactly doing when it um, encounters each knot uh, on the spine? Uh, is it so the Kundalini? What it's doing, and and this can happen not just in the spine. And I think this is really really important to know that your awakening can start anywhere in your light body it does not have to happen start in your spine um so you might start experiencing a pulsating hands or something like that and it just means that it's more open there than anywhere else 
So what what the energy is doing, it's going in and trying to it's, it's opening you up inwards and helping you open up to more light within you. And this can be experienced in different ways depending on where in the body it's working. So the different chakras are relating to different aspects of our beingness. So the higher chakras um, are more of the metaphysical, mystical experiences, but we can have very phys physical, mystical experiences too if we experience them in our lower chakras. And the, the Kundalini, what it's doing, it's, it's healing us. That's the essential. It's healing us and it's removing shadows, negative beliefs, pain, trauma, different things that we have accumulated in our light field, in our in light body, in our being from all different existences. And it's helping us to awaken to the multidimensional being that we are. And is it possible that um, someone could open up their sixth chakra, let's say third eye, without having a kundalini experience? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a kundalini experience if you're having it, but maybe not a full awakening. Um, and you might not feel so well if you do experience that because... I mean, my lower chakras needed a lot of work after my awakening, and I needed a lot of integration. So it's like I worked with um, a, a guy named uh, Dao Semko down in Florida, and he was one of my first teachers, a brilliant guy. And um, he was like, well, you're not fully awake. And I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> and he's like, you're not, your your energy is not fully integrated. And I was like, oh. And then I worked a lot of integrating my own energy field, and and that's really where it's like, I started to learn a lot. Um. So, so going back to your question, is that you can open up your third eye, but if you have a lot of fear in your body, if you have a lot of blockages and unresolved trauma, you might be experiencing horrible things and you might feel that this world starts to go in between the other world and you can't really control or make a difference what's real or not. I would say with schizophrenia or people that are um, mentally imbalanced have some sort of, you know, And why is the Kundalini experience, um, some people say that it's dangerous, it's better not to have a Kundalini awakening. What are your thoughts on that? I think you shouldn't force it. Uh, I think uh, keep on creating balance in your system, um, meditate, like Vipassana is great, it helps to clear, uh, you know, work on the whole body and not just focusing on the third eye and not focusing on any other chakras. I think that's really dangerous. And it, it's, it's um, yeah, it's very powerful energy that you're dealing with. But this energy is also love. And so I think it's like, are you coming from your ego? Or are you coming from like a spiritual guidance is coming like, okay, this, I'm trusting this. So are you working with the energy or are you thinking like, I'm just going to do this because I want to open my third eye and I'm just going to go do really heavy breathing, uh, right? And like force the energy. Uh, I don't recommend that at all. But I think we are, we're going to a collective awakening and so people are awakening everywhere. And the more people that are awakening, the more other people are awakening because the, 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 we're helping each other. Um, awaken together and so it's gonna happen you, you know like it, it's it's inevitable in the time that we are and so having fear about it or thinking that it's demonic um, 
it's not serving anything. And I understand people kind of have fears about it, but what it's doing is it's bringing up the fears within you already. It's bringing up your own demons, and you might not realize them as your own because you can't see that shadow within you, but you might need to heal it. And so that's why it's coming up. And that's why also having and opening up um, chakras in an unbalanced way might create this feeling of, of, of living in a horror but it's really you facing yourself but you haven't dealt with your own stuff and grounding I mean going through a spiritual awakening and not being in nature and not working on grounding yourself super hard yeah and, and some people also say that this experience is hard to go through without a teacher. Is it really important to have a teacher or a guide or can someone kind of like intuitively walk themselves through this process? I haven't had one specific. I've, I haven't had a, a guru. Um, I mean, I had a spontaneous awakening without anything like that. I found teachers on the way. I work with a lot of plant medicines. I found my teachers there. Um, but honestly, even then, it's like they keep helping me to find my myself back to me and to the Kundalini energy. And it's very strong, and I can feel it. Um, and it's learning to trust myself and... It's an excellent teacher. I mean, yeah, I, I think I think there was a, such a big shift in my awakening and that like guidance from within got so strong. And though even times I go at times and I doubt myself and I'm in between, and I feel lost and I, I'm, and I found that's okay too. That's a part of the process. Sometimes, the mind wants to grasp and it wants to understand and know, but a part of the big process is just like being and allowing it to be. And sometimes we can be really uncomfortable and we're like, well, what's the purpose of this? And mind's going like, well, what am I supposed to do? We're like, how can I fix this? And it's like, no, you just need to be with this right now. You just need to show up every day and, do your practice, meditation, yoga, whatever it is. Um, eat the right foods. Have the right thoughts. You know, like it's all these little things that this energy is teaching. Um, and so it becomes about each moment. You know, like how do you show up in life in each moment? And when you realize that, it's like everything slows down. And some people talk about having kundalini awakening through plant medicine or by um, this concept called shakti path with ah, right. a spiritual teacher. Um, what, um, do you think that's kind of like a shortcut to versus where it happens naturally? Well, um, the kundalini awakening... It has to come from within, like the full awakening, the self-realization. Um, I, I had clients and people that I was working with that asked for a Shakti pot. Uh, and so that's sending a lot of energy into the root. And they found it too much. Like, it was too much to handle for them. And so I don't do it anymore. And even if people ask for it, I, I don't recommend it. Um, the way I work personally, because what happens is when you send a lot of energy into someone, and that's why I don't really into Reiki or anything like that, I develop my own energy method because... When I open my third eye, it's a siddha that comes with it is that you can feel into someone else. You can enter into someone's being. Um, and so what I do in my energy session is I help people open up to their own energy within. And I clear their energy system so that their energy, I'm not pushing the kundalini to awaken to kind of like press a lot of energy for it so they can just shoot up. 
um, I'm just helping people clear their fields so that it's open and balanced and people can do this on their own, right? It's not something someone external can do or needs to do. Um, but it's, it's, um, pretty when it's ready. So it's like a flower that will just come when it's ready rather than kind of forcing it out of its shell when it's not ready. And there's a lot of other things in the way, um, which might be really heavy to deal with. But you emailed me some of these questions before uh, this interview. And so I've been thinking about it because I've heard their gurus, they can do the Shakti Pot, right? And I've heard, you know, so I'm, I'm wondering if that's what they're doing is that they're so powerful so that they can clear the Shushumna and all the nadis and the whole energy body in just one touch. And, and then that, that sort of clears everything and then that helps. But the full awakening, the self realization, I don't think it doesn't resonate with me that there's something someone else can give to them because it's an eternal realization that you are divine it's not something someone can tell you or give you it has to come from within through an inner knowing that that has to come when you're ready when you're when you're open to receiving it it cannot come sooner or later but activating the energy within someone is super easy like if you're next to someone that's that's awake, you're gonna be activated um, because the energy just starts to be activated within it. it. And that's why the more people awakens, the more people become activated, and it becomes easier and easier to awaken. Does that make sense? Yes, uh, and I, I, it was the same similar reasons. I the idea of shakti Pad didn't resonate with me because what if the person has not um, learned um, through their own experiences. It's not something that can be given to them. Um, so that, that was a bit confusing to me that how can those realizations be just given to someone um, without it coming from within? Being ready, right. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm um, yeah, and I, and I don't agree with the, the sending so much energy into someone either when they're not ready. It's um, for me, it doesn't for me it doesn't feel responsible to do that, and I feel I feel it's irresponsible. Um, I think, like I say, the way I work is to help people open up their energy field, and so that it's it's like you know, clearing out your house from junk, you know, and then you have space and then you can have more people in there. But if you have a lot of junk and you put a lot of people in there, it starts to get crowded and really uncomfortable. Uh, <laughs> that's kind of stupid. <laughs> but uh, if you make space for it, it will just expand on its own. And it's a beautiful energy. It's love. Um, it's, it's the most beautiful energy that there is. And it's very pleasurable when you have the space for it to expand within you. But if you have a lot of blockages and you send a lot of energy in there, it's going to expand and you're going to aggravate those. Everything be felt much, much more stronger. And how do you differentiate, um, between um and this i'm saying because there are there may be some people who take i want to apply discernment to this process because some people may say that they can offer shakti path and they can awaken these things in you um, but how do you different tell if they, that person is really uh, is kundalini awakened or what they are saying <laughs> is just from the books <laughs> Oh, you know, anyone, oh, it's so, you have to trust your own intuition and your own guidance. Um, same with if you're working with plant medicine and you meet a shaman or something like that and it doesn't feel okay, don't do it. It's just, you know, if it doesn't feel okay, then don't do it. And trust your own intuition, trust your own inner guidance, trust your gut feeling, trust your heart. Is this a person that you feel that you can trust? Um, 
being scared can be a part of it. I think facing our fears is important. But if it's like that uncomfortable feeling, feeling like, oh, I don't know about this person. I don't want to be close to this person. Then don't, you know. And 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 you, have, everyone has their own inner guidance and trust it. Because sometimes it can be confusing when the person is saying uh, really good information, uh, and that could be from some 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 books or some someone else who has had the experience. Uh, so because if a teacher is able to give the correct information, but not they don't have that Kundalini experience, um, it's it. I think it can be a bit tricky to. To differentiate between yeah. what's real. Um, an awakened person will radiate love. If you feel love from them and, and you feel that you feel comfortable around them, then trust that. But I don't know. I don't know about Shakti Pats. Um, God is everywhere, and and for me, like I, I I can only go back to my own personal experience because I don't know. There might be people that had great experience with Shakti Pats. I don't know from my own. I just know from having given energy to the root chakra to my clients, and it's not having been a good experience to them, and, and me not wanting to do it anymore because of that. So that's my personal experience with Shakti Pats. Um. God is everywhere and God is within us all. And so I believe that I had my awakening because I wanted to know what God is. I wanted to know God. And I prayed to know God and I found God. I didn't need to have an intermediate. Though I read the, the, the Yogananda, uh, Paramahansa Yogananda's mm -hmm. book and other biography of yoga. So I feel like my guidance from men led me to that book and led me to start praying. And, you know, there, there are many teachers along the way, but I find that they all point me back to to my own inner um, guidance. Right? So I think there's the, the danger is going to like, oh, this person knows more than me. This person, I need to ask everything, you know? The answer is always within. And, and it's within us all. It's, it's even if you don't know Kundalini, you still have it within you. Everyone has it, even if you're not aware that it's within you. It's it's the life force that's keeping you alive. It's it's the life that you are. And does moving on to my next question, um, do you think dreaming has um, some role to play in Kundalini awakening? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love to dream. Oh, um, how do you mean? Uh, do dreams play a certain role where you get some messages through dreams? Uh, is it part of the Kundalini experience or? Yes. I mean, the, the, the life is always communicating with you and it will start communicating with you even more when you start to open up and ask questions and wanting to communicate with it. Everything is a dream. It's a living dream. And so, we go to sleep and we have a dream. We wake up, we're still in a dream. Even though we feel like we're in the physical body and we can get hurt and, and these things, but it's still it's still a dream and, and at every point and every moment life is responding to us. And so we are being given teachers at every moment. Like God is communicating to us in every single moment. So yes, they're very much in dreams. And I love working with dreams because they can help us a lot uh, through symbolism. And I, I love asking questions um, before going to sleep. 
and then having dreams um, or understanding my path through my dreams. I love it. Um, but if uh, I've been reading this Tibetan book of dreaming, I think it's called something like that. And they're talking about not to get lost in delusion of the dream. And they talk about... When you, when you are not aware in your dream, you know, you're not fully conscious, you're not fully awake. And when you can't control your dream, you're not fully conscious, you're not fully awake. You get lost in it. So you get lost in life. You get lost in your dreams. Where do you go when you go to sleep? Like, where's your consciousness? Your consciousness doesn't need sleep. Your consciousness doesn't need to have a break. It doesn't. It doesn't. It can be fully awake all the time. So I think that's an important aspect to also understand. It's like, can we get lost in, in the dream as well as we get lost in life? But having said that, because when I was working with that book, I would sometimes uh, go to sleep and I would just go into the light, which is what they call yoga nidra. Uh, and that's the practice. But I really enjoy having dreams. So it's like I, just as much as I enjoy being in the physical, I can go into the light, but I really like enjoy coming back into my body and experiencing being a human being um, and eating and doing all these human stuff. So, um, you know, you can communicate. What I'm trying to say is if you start communicating with God and with spirit, everything can talk to you, you know? And dreams, Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Uh, and dreams can be one of the ways of those communications. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Okay. And healing too. We can heal a lot through our, our dreams. When we go to sleep, we ask for, for healing or understanding a relationship or um, conflict within ourselves or something like that. Yeah. Yes. Sometimes they can also give a solution to. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Interesting. yeah. Um, and the Kundalini rising experience, um, is, the, is that something that happens only once during the awakening or it's something that happens, mul that could happen multiple times? Um, in multiple, multiple times. Um, before my awakening, like I said, I used to pull the energy up through my spine, but I just had a full blown rising when I was 19 um, and then I don't think like that I could feel the energy rise like that but now I can I can have it you know several times a day um, and you, you can uh, kind of ask for that it's no I don't ask it's, for it really it's um, it just comes, like if I do yoga or if I do physical things or sometimes uh, the energy is very, very strong and I just, like, I get up too fast or I've done yoga or I've been meditating a lot or things like that or, like, you know, sometimes I don't even know why and it just, it just rises and, and it's kind of... It's like this world start to shift away and it's this sound kind of comes on, this inner sound and everything gets light and if I'm standing up I have to try to hold on to things because I'm not really fully in control of my body and I can start shaking like this. It's like the whole body and the energy gets really strong. It probably sounds really scary when I talk about it. Um, but it's just, it's like this, it's like someone turns on way more of the light, of the energy. So it just flows way, way, way more. And then it comes down again and I can be back in my body and like do normal stuff and, and be fully in control of my body again. 
but it's like a flushing. It's like that's what it feels like. It you know it keeps expanding me, keeps helping me expand, so I can hold more and more light. So it becomes more um, active after the awakening. Oh yeah, and it's a continuous expansion. Yeah, and it's not just in the spine. Like the energy rises up like this, um, but it's not just in the spine. It's this like your being. Like you, become, you know, yeah. And some people have mentioned about um, Kundalini being part of a twin flame journey um, experience. <laughs> what do you think? Oh, twin flames. Um, you know, I think it's easy to get lost in that, and I think. <laughs> Oh, people are not going to like this. I think twin flames are kind of 3D. I think it comes from a perspective of, um, of the other. And the thing is, the other is the illusion. And I think relationships are really powerful to teach us about unconditional love. So I see the beauty in that. But... I've never seen someone that says they're twin flame and I felt it resonate like oh these this is one and the same soul um, I think we can have very very deep connections with certain people and I think we can get lost in that connection and that's why I call it 3D because we can get lost in the drama and thinking that if I only kind of fix this relationship, or if I just heal, then I'm going to be with this person. And I, I think you have to be whole, and then everyone is your twin flame. Everyone is your other. And that's really, really where we're going. And maybe some people are easier to love than others, but then really the work is to love everyone. Um, but, you know, I don't know everything. <laughs> I like the idea of the unity consciousness uh, that some people talk about in the twin flame journey that two souls can be so in union uh, that, that they can merge into one soul. Uh, that's very interesting. That, that's an interesting idea. But they can do that even if you're not twins, twin flames because everything is God. and is, Everything is God expressing itself in different forms and beings. Right. Um, you're another me, and I'm another you, and you're really having a conversation with yourself. And so we keep attracting different beings, others, that are another aspect of ourselves throughout our journey. Uh, that's what I mean, like, God is always teaching us, and we keep meeting teachers, even though we might not see them as a teacher, um, Everything that's happening in our life experience, every little thing, and every little grain of sand, every grass, is God. And so the wind, everything, there's nothing that is outside of that unity, of that oneness. And so separating it, even separating it on the soul level, isn't aligned with the higher consciousness of, of being in unity because it's like that separation that oh this being I can be at one with but not this being but we're all one there's not that one that you're really like does that make sense yeah kind kind of if you can elaborate a little more so, so the twin flame is that a soul has separated into two beings, right, into one incarnation. Or that you can have a twin flame on another plane uh, guiding you. Well, what I'm saying is that 
everything is you. We all are kind of one soul. Right. Yeah. Yes, exactly. We're one being. We're one unity consciousness. There's just one consciousness. And I'm communicating with my, son, my own consciousness by talking to you. You're talking back to me. And we experience self as separate beings. But we're not really ever separate. And so in deep love, borders disappear. And so when you have what people say, this twin flame connection, this this immediate love and connection, um, it's much easier to merge into each other. But with an open heart, meeting an other open heart, that, that's, that's as possible. You know, it's, it's not saying like, you can only have it, this experience with this person, you could have it with anyone. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Right? And that's what Tantra is about. Like white, white, uh, white Tantra, it's, it's about, you have different Tantras, but like just sitting and, and staring at someone and merging with them and, and uh, knowing that the other is always you and we're multidimensional beings. And so in that sense, I find a twin flame can be sort of third dimensional what was the last thing you said? I'm sorry, I missed it. Sorry, I, I can find the twin flame, the whole movement can be kind of third dimensional because it's coming back to needing to be with another um, and one specific other and and even this idea of having a mission um, together. Um, I think you can have missions with many different people. But in the end, all relationships are teachers and they're great teachers and they're very very powerful if we can see them as teachers and going back to the heart and then it doesn't really matter if you call it a twin flame relationship soulmate relationship or just a relationship it's an amazing teacher for getting back into the heart yes i th i think relationships can be a great teacher it's kind right. of like a mirror to yeah where you are. right yeah, and if you're in a love relationship, you know, like, if you start experiencing a lot of love in your relationship, it's the same with, like, people giving you a Shakti pot. It starts to illuminate everything that is not love within you, and you might start to deal with your shadows. Yeah. Yeah, that reminds me of um, this, um, some people call it as dark night of soul. Uh, is, yeah. that, is that something everyone who is having a Kundalini uh, who's going through a kundalini process do everyone has to go through that or it's different for different people I have no idea um, I went through what I would say a dark night of the soul when I went to the brink of, of starting to pray and starting to question because I was so depressed um, that I didn't see the purpose of living anymore Um but I was thinking, if I'm going to kill myself, I don't know what's going to be on the other side. And so I can see very clearly how it was like his life pushing me and giving me very good lessons to come to the point where I started to pray and I started to ask for a change and I started taking action to change my life. I think that um, our darkness can be an amazing gift. And sometimes when we're on the wrong track life will push us back in the right direction and it's not not very nice sometimes yeah oh, what are like the different stages in kundalini process um, or um it, it, it just goes with the flow um, the different stages like what do you mean like if there is a specific structure mm, yeah if there is a specific structure or or, or maybe there isn't not in my experience. Um, I've, I mean, I've heard so many different, different people going through different kinds of awakenings, and I 
it's it's so individual i mean we're all unique beings and so our experience with this energy is going to be completely unique um i worked as a facilitator at ayahuasca center um and what what was really really extraordinary was to hear that everyone had different journeys they all sort of led to the same to the same conclusion that everything is love and um, we have to take care of each other and, and, and to share love with each other and we have to uh, be kind and um, these essential essential lessons that everything is now and so on but the way there to those lessons was I mean there was not one thing that was the same everyone had different things that they were working on and so you know in the journey of the spiritual path you're going to face exactly what you need to face at each and every moment and the, the lesson is love. So you go through all these different paths, but ultimately come come back to love. Yeah. It's and sometimes love is saying no, right? <laughs> it's like, you know, like the idea of what love is, is, is something that maybe, maybe uh, we have a um, subjective idea of. But, yeah, we have all these, as many beings that there are that exist, that's how many paths there are going to be. So I don't think there's one right path or one structure. This is like how it's supposed to be. Um, the way that you're awakening and the way that each individual person is awakening is perfect for them. And one more question I had about, um, and this is my own um, misunderstanding in a way. Um, I used to assume that if someone is uh, spiritually awakened, they don't make uh, intuitive mistakes or they, they are not wrong with their intuition. Uh, what, but I think it's possible that if someone could be spiritually awakened, but they still make, they, can, they could still be wrong with their intuition is that well here's the thing this is funny because this is i think this idea of wrong or like failure or things like that i was like i have friends that are really awake and a lot of them are, are really good with like i mean we all have different gifts you know like we all have come to the table with our unique different gifts and some are, are like seers, you know. I don't see myself perceptive. I mean, I'm very intuitive, but I don't like I don't predict the futures or know anything like that. Um, sometimes I think people are supposed to tell you something because it might not be the right thing per se, but it's going to get you in the right direction like you know your ego is like yeah but you know like you're supposed to be like super super intuitive mm -hmm. and awake and you just told me that i'm supposed to go and do that and be with that person or something like that it, it's something like that you're talking about right like the um, or in in a way like so, and i don't mean being wrong but making psychic mistakes um, not for like predicting something for others but um i don't have a good example uh, but you could use that example where you you psychic right. Okay. right but but i think like for that for example it's like you're literally giving away your power to someone else to tell you what you should do and you're here to create your life and so there is no actually like what should i do i mean it's this has been a lot in my path especially after my awakening like what am i here to do 
And it's like, I've asked so, I mean, this is the question I've asked the most of everything. And right, like, you, your Kundalini is weak, why don't you know? <laughs> like, right? Why don't you know that? Shouldn't you just know everything? Um, and what I've learned is, like, life happens moment by moment. And there is no predestined plan of what I should do. I am my own creator, and so I'm here to experience life as me, and that's the purpose. You can create infinite realities to experience. So what is it that I want to experience? I want to experience the greatest joy, and sometimes that requires walking down a path of doing a lot of healing and dissolving all those things that is not giving me that joy and truly finding the path to my true self, which is pure love, joy, and bliss. And that's continuous expansion and continuous work, and that's sometimes really uncomfortable. And sometimes that means breaking your ego in half by realizing that you don't know everything and you don't know everything about everyone else. Sometimes you do. Uh, a lot of times you don't. And it's really none of your business. I mean, I'm talking about myself. Sorry for saying you, but like, it's none of my business to tell other people what they should do. The one thing I should do is tell people to listen to themselves um, to trust their own intuition and their own inner guidance because that's going to help them to get stronger. That's something I should do. I know that. You know, like if there's any of that, I know. Um, but this all seeing enlightened beings, maybe one day I'll be that, but I don't think that anyone really wants to know, like, your whole life and how it's going to be. I think that we have pre, pre, preset things that we have asked to learn in our lifetime. I think we have preset agreements with certain souls that will help us on the path and we will help each other um, to learn certain lessons that we want to learn, that we might have been trouble learning in past lifetimes or in current existence, uh, existences. Um, but I think this is the same thing as like getting trapped in this idea of how it should be and then you're not really in the present moment anymore and you're not in now. Because the now always have surprises and everything can change. Like if someone gives you um, a reading, they're giving you a reading and they can be super, super wide and clear, right? But they're giving a reading from where you are right now. You might walk out from a reading and you have an experience and you, or you meet someone or something happens and you shift. You're not in the same state of being. You're not in the same frequency. And you choose to go a different way. And from there on, that moment, your destiny changed. So what that person told you might have been true at that moment. But then in the next moment, it changed. I think that's... So, sorry, go yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, I, I forgot what I was going to say. That's a very good explanation. Hey, and it brings you back to yourself too and understanding that it's like it's really empowering too it's like okay well, well I have free will this is my life I am the creator what do I want to do what do I want to experience and also I think it's more fun when you don't know what's going to right, happen. If you, right. if, if you know every single thing, that would be right. real, yeah. What, what's the point of it? It's like re-watching an old, like a movie you watch so many times. Like if it's a really good movie, yeah, but after a while you're like, I want to see something new. Yeah. 
<laughs> is there anything else you would like to share with the viewers today? Um, trust your own path, trust your own intuition, trust your own guidance. I think like, I mean, on your path, trust it trust like if it doesn't like with teachers and things like that you might have many trust your you know trust 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 yourself and the more that you start to reach within to establish that connection it will go, it will get stronger and it will get easier and easier to communicate that way and listen and just listening Thank you for that beautiful message. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, and if viewers want to find out more about you, healingdivinity.com is your yeah. name. Yeah. Uh, and I also want to thank everyone um, for watching this video. If you find them informative, please remember to subscribe. Thank you.